Konnichiwa. This is Tom, Ghost of Matsubara, your man in Japan, coming to you today with another episode of Kanji, kanji Hunter. Hunter. I do not claim to be the best at kanji. I do not claim to have the best handwriting. I do this because I like Japanese kanji and I have a few English speakers who are learning Japanese from me and I hope that this series is inspiring them to think about Japanese kanji and play with the language. Today's lesson idea came up from a conversation that I was having with my jujitsu teacher the other week. So before class started last week, a comic book fell out of my bag, and this comic book is Jujutsu Kaisen. And Jujutsu Kaisen is a really popular anime and manga that's uh, out right now, and uh, you should check it out if you don't know about it. But anyway, I mentioned the title to another classmate, and my teacher said, Jujutsu? Because the words sound remarkably similar in Japanese. There's Jujutsu, and there's Jujutsu. Anyway, let's take a look at it. Today we're going to look at the kanji for jutsu. So first, let's draw this kanji. It is probably the most complex one that I've done so far in this series. But anyway, it's pretty cool. Before we draw this, let's go to the tome. The tome! Again, I want to be giving you guys correct information, so that's why I think it's important to reference some of the things that I'm saying here. Just to let you know that it's not all just my random ideas. I have actually studied and looked into some of this stuff. The kanji attached to jujutsu. This kanji represents the idea of uh, a technique or to follow a technique or an art. In ancient Asian culture, this was represented by basically they drew like a crossroads as you can see over here there was a crossroads and in the middle of the crossroads they put this i this uh well let's draw it and talk about it that's probably the best way to do this so anyway in ancient times right they basically did this to represent a crossroads right and then this turned into this as you saw in the kanji explanation that I drew over there in a second. So anyway, to introduce the idea of to follow along a path that others have gone before you to like to learn an art, to learn a skill, all right? They represented it with this symbol that kind of looks like the katakana ho, but then they put this up here. Now, I guess that symbolizes the idea shitagao, now, shita gao means to follow along with something or to uh, adhere to something, right? So, like, if you're you're learning an art, you're learning a technique, you adhere to that art, right? So, they put that pronunciation of shita gao represented through this in the middle of this crossroads. So, what we get, what we get finally is this. Don't forget, it's good to sing while you draw kanji. All right. And then enclose it like that. All right. Not bad. I'm going to pat myself on the back. It's not the prettiest kanji ever drawn, but for me, that's pretty good. So again, you're going to see this kanji in a lot of places. It's used in a lot of context, and it's probably already come up in words that you've heard already used in English, right? Uh, uh, like, uh, well, in Japanese, we say jujutsu. Uh, they also say judo, but that's kind of a different art, uh, uh, different conversation. So jujutsu is... Uh, what we say jujitsu in English, right? And that's represented here, right? Uh, ju means soft, right? Uh, it's also represented yawarakai, you can say in Japanese, right? But one of the pronunciations is ju, and that's a, a elongated u sound, right? So jujutsu, right? And I put down here, of course, we say jitsu and jitsu. If you meet the Brazilians, they say jujitsu. They got this little jujitsu, right? They, they have an accent. It's cool. I like it. Yeah, so the soft art, right? Jujitsu. Because, you know, you're not using weapons and you're not actually trying to 
pummel anybody's face in, you're trying to either make them tap or you're trying to choke them out, right? So it's it's a pretty non-violent art if you think about it, right? So it's the soft art. Now, the word that uh, sounded so similar is jujutsu, right? It's almost the same word. If you're an English speaker, you probably thought that sounded exactly the same, but it's a shortened ju, right? If you look here, this ju comes from the idea of to curse or uh, to to pray away a sickness in a way. Uh, now, I think this is really interesting. And you can see here, I'm probably going to do a future episode of this. But this kanji for ju, it developed over time into what it is now from this more ancient kanji, which means mantra, right? Now, mantra is not a curse. But you can see how uh, people who don't understand another culture can get confused and they're like, oh my God, these people over there are praying. Are they cursing me? Ah. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, etymology, right? Etymology. Maybe that's a different episode. We've also got ninjutsu. Ninjutsu in Japanese. And I know you Americans know what ninjutsu is because that was so popular. Uh, we love ninjas. Ninja American. Americans love ninjas. We just do. We just do. So you can see here, ninjutsu, right? And it's the art of stealth and combat, right? How cool can you get? Nothing cooler than a ninja. Now this jutsu kanji is not only attached to fighting arts or martial arts. Uh, it's attached to many different arts or technologies or techniques that you can learn. So here we've got shu jutsu, right? And shu is hand or te. In, as another way to say it in Japanese. Uh, but shujutsu is operation or surgery. I have had shujutsu in Japan before, so it's a, lear it's a word I had to learn. We also have gakujutsu. Gakujutsu is scholarship or academic pursuits. Any kind of academic study that you get into is going to be gakujutsu. Now this next point is kind of interesting because up until now, you've been seeing the jutsu kanji after another kanji, right? And when you put two kanji together, they're, they're called compound kanji. It makes a difference in meaning if you, put the, if you put a certain kanji either before or after another kanji. The example I have here today is jutsu go. And I figure you know this already, right? Because we had go from nihon go, right? Like word or language. Uh, and we, we looked at it already. So anyway, jutsu go is a technical term or terminology, right? If there's a specific word for a specific uh, field of study or science or whatever, right? And, and that particular word is only applicable to that particular science, then it is jutsu go, right? It's a, it's a particular terminology. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I enjoyed today's episode. And I'd like to say a special thanks and shout out to Ron over at Southside Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu here in Nagoya. If you're in Nagoya and you want to study particularly Gi Jiu-Jitsu, right? Well, that's where, where they wear a Gi. Check out SSBJJ. Follow him on Instagram. The link is in the information below. Thanks again. And remember, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at kanji underscore hunter, or you can send me an email directly at tomsenseingu at gmail.com. If you have any ideas for future episodes, please don't hesitate. Send me a text or an email. I look forward to your comments. And until next time, matane. matane.